About a month ago, I put out a video explaining how I made this. It's off right now because I didn't plan this out very well. If you missed the last video, basically I modified this old ass iPod to stream music from Spotify using a Raspberry Pi under the hood. The response to this project has been unfathomably cool. It's been written up by publications from around the world, including several that I actually consume regularly, which is crazy to me. Also, this happened, which if you know, you know. So real quick, before I dive into the changes I've made over the past few weeks, I want to sincerely thank every single person who has watched and or shared my video. If you left an encouraging comment, please know I definitely read it and it meant a lot to me. If you left a mean or unhelpful comment, please know that I definitely read it and it bothered me for longer than it probably should have. Most of all, I want to thank the brave souls who hopped into the GitHub repo or Hackaday.io page and helped me improve the code, design, and documentation. Seeing you all modding your own iPods and answering each other's questions fills my little hacker heart with so much joy. But without further ado, I would like to answer some of your questions and show off some of the work I've done since I published the last video. I'm gonna hold my phone up and make it look like I'm reading off of some curated list, but I'm not. First up, why did you use micro USB instead of USB type C for charging? I honestly didn't think that hard about it. I had a micro USB charger sitting in a drawer and it just happened to be the perfect size. Almost immediately after I published, I realized that Adafruit sold a similarly sized board with a USB-C connector instead of a micro USB connector. So here we are. It charges at the exact same rate, but at least now I can flip the cable around, I guess. All right, next question. Can it play games? Your eyes do not deceive you. I am playing a full version of Pokemon Red. This is part of the beauty of building this project around a Raspberry Pi. The software ecosystem is already amazing. I used RetroPie, go check them out, to install a few vintage console emulators alongside my Spotify application. I had this up and running within an hour. The interesting part was getting the controls to work. The iPod click wheel only has five buttons, left, right, up, down, center. The original Game Boy had eight buttons, if you count each of the directions on the D-pad individually, which you do. And most other console controllers have even more than that. So I wrote some code that turns each iPod button press into a virtual keystroke. The center button behaves differently depending on if and where you have a finger resting on the click wheel. So if you click the center button with no finger touching the click wheel, it's the equivalent of pressing A on your keyboard. Now if you just rest a finger on the right side of the click wheel and then click the center button, it's like typing B. I basically slice the click wheel up into four different segments and that gives me nine total button options. In theory, you could map an entire keyboard this way. The click wheel reports something like 48 unique positions. But let's be honest, this is an incredibly awkward way to play games. It works fine for something like Pokemon, where you're generally only pressing one button at a time, but you're just not going to be able to play anything that requires even remotely precise timing. Unless... Once again, we are rewarded for using the endlessly versatile Raspberry Pi Zero W. You can pair any old Bluetooth controller and enjoy this highly immersive gaming experience. Also, I feel obligated to say that I do own physical copies of any games that you see in or around this video. The last thing I changed was by far the most requested, and I totally get it the headphone jack. I hooked it back up. We can all rest easy.
I was always planning on doing this. I just got impatient waiting for a part to come in. I wanna be clear about something though. I did this for completeness, not for sound quality. I am still not using the iPod's original digital to analog converter, which apparently some of you have an emotional attachment to. I am fully aware that it sounds better than both the Pi's Bluetooth audio and the cheap USB sound card that I ended up jamming in here, but neither of those two options make this project unusable for me. I can appreciate a nice set of open back headphones paired with a proper amp, I really can, but there are so many contexts in which I consume audio where the quality just doesn't make that much of a difference. I love the freedom and flexibility that Bluetooth audio gives me, and I am no longer afraid to admit that to you. So I'm gonna keep going with questions, but if you stick around, I did take footage of me implementing the changes I just described. I'm gonna put those at the end of the video, so stick around if you're interested in that. All right, another very popular question. Can you make me one? Can I buy it? Can I send you my iPod to modify? Give it to me. How do I word this? No. I just don't have the bandwidth or frankly the desire to assemble any more of these right now. That being said, I am exploring the idea of putting together a simple, no soldering required DIY kit that you could buy and use to trick out your own iPod. If that's something you'd be interested in, please leave a comment below. It's not at the top of my list right now, but if enough people are interested, I'm, I'm definitely gonna consider it. Also, I should point out, Thanks to some very helpful strangers, the documentation for this project is getting better and better every week. It's not quite at the step-by-step, hold-my-hand guide point yet, but it's, it's getting there. I encourage you to check it out. You might be more ready for it than you think. All right, next question. Will it work with Apple Music slash Tidal slash my streaming service of choice? Now, initially I thought the answer was categorically no, but I dug into it a little bit more. I actually do think you could tweak this to work with Apple Music, but you'd have to completely rewrite the user interface software. I think the app would have to run inside a web browser, but that makes me a little bit nervous that the Raspberry Pi wouldn't be able to keep up. That's, that's unclear, I'd have to test that. And also, I gotta say, part of the beauty of this project was taking two competitors' products and kind of forcing them to work together in an unnatural way. I don't know, that's just me. Regarding title. I'm not gonna say it's impossible, but it seems too impractical to look into any further. And honestly, I'm just gonna extend that to all other streaming services. Maybe possible, probably too difficult. Can you download songs to the iPod or do you always need an internet connection? The answer to both halves of that question is kinda? As far as I can tell, Spotify does not allow third-party applications to cache song files locally. I imagine that's because it might make it easier for folks to just pirate everything, I don't know. So no, you can't just download your Spotify playlists. However, the Raspberry Pi in here uses a micro SD card for storage, and you can just load any files that you own onto it over Wi-Fi. With some pretty reasonable software tweaks, I think you could have your MP3 collection live alongside the Spotify listings in my app. I don't personally see the need. I am grateful to say that in 2021, I can't remember the last time that I didn't have an internet connection. What is that horrible noise? This is a fun story. At some point, I must have crossed some wires, fried something, I don't know. The Raspberry Pi started emitting this very annoying high-pitched sound. I'll put it up here so you can see it. I can hear it, but only if I'm within approximately three feet of the closed iPod. So I eventually got used to it and then frankly kind of just forgot it existed. While I was editing the video, I knew the noise had been captured in some of the clips and I tried to filter it out but apparently I forgot some. I would like to sincerely apologize to all of my viewers with younger ears. It seems like my last video was maybe a bad time. Sorry. I will be sure to run all of my future videos, including this one by my wife, 
who seems to have much stronger high frequency hearing than I do. And finally, I would like to address the small but not insignificant assortment of commenters who wrote this project off as, quote, pointless. Guys, I know. <laughs> I even agree in some ways, uh, but I realize I never talked about why I went through with this build or what I wanted to get out of it. This was never ever meant to be a practical thing. This is not a product. This is not even something I'm going to use every day. This is an experiment. It's a party trick. It's a prototype. It's a statement. This is me, a consumer unsatisfied with the options available, attempting to build my ideal user experience using products from two different companies who compete for my exclusive time and money. I promise you that is a deeply satisfying exercise, especially as the hardware we buy becomes harder and harder to modify or repair. My work tends to be way more about building the thing than having the thing. That's why I started making these videos. That's why I'm always gonna try my hardest to open source everything I do. And that's why everything I do is going to be at least a little bit stupid, because that's who I am. So if you are one of my many new subscribers, or you are about to be, I look forward to sharing much more of that with you. All right, for the rest of the video, I'm gonna be diving into the technical aspects of the changes I've made recently. You will see that I was a bit hesitant to open the iPod back up because I was scared of breaking something. And you'll see that I was right to be scared. I broke the shit out of it twice. Enjoy. So I've got some new parts in. Uh, I got this tiny little boost module from Adafruit. So that's gonna take the 3.7-ish volts from the battery and boost it up to five volts, which is what everything in the iPod's running on. And I also got this USB DAC. So that's a digital to analog converter. This is just a USB sound card. Um, so you would plug this into your computer and you'd plug your headphones or speakers into here. Um, I'm actually gonna desolder the USB jack because we don't have room for that. And I am also gonna desolder the headphone jack because we also don't have room for that. So the USB side, I'm just gonna solder it directly to the Raspberry Pi's USB port. And the head, where the headphone jack used to be, I'm gonna just wire that to the iPod's headphone jack, the original one. This is gonna be the first time I've cracked this open since I closed it to film the first video and I'm, I'm honestly kind of scared of breaking it. So uh, I, if anything goes wrong while I'm in there, it was a good run. We, we had a good time, so thank you.
In case you missed what just happened, which at the time I did, I just broke the iPod's ribbon cable attempting to get the battery disconnected. Fortunately, I had purchased an extra iPod knowing that I would do something like this, but just a heads up, if you are attempting to build this yourself, those ribbon cables are delicate. All right, you can see we've got a whole new mess in there. The blue piece on the left is the USB sound card. Uh, just to the right of that, the little black piece is the boost module. And one thing I didn't mention, I actually bought a USB-C charger. Um, I don't actually know that this thing is gonna fit where the old charger was, but we're, we're gonna try it. I got the headphone jack working, so I'm gonna plug this in Raspberry Pi is currently playing some test playback thing where it just switches back and forth between the left and right speaker. I don't have a left and right speaker, I just have this thing with a little cable attached to it. Let's see. Front, left. Front, right. Front, left. Front, right. Front. Right, so I did mention I broke this thing twice and you're looking at the second casualty right here. Turns out the USB charger boards are slightly different sizes. I put the new one in, tried to close the case, and snapped the SD card in half.
Thank you again and again and again for watching, especially to all the contributors who jumped in on the project pages, especially these GitHub users who jumped in like right away. That was super awesome. And as a parting gift, here is a slow scrolling list of all the name suggestions I've received for this project set to some very pleasant music. See you next time. Thank you.